Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Fill Your Pipeline with IT Security Prospects. I'm Sarah Duffy, Marketing Manager here at Barracuda MSP, and I'm happy to be moderating today's session. Today, I am joined by Raj Kara. You may previously remember Raj from his role IT webinars and his um, role at Miller Mailer, makers of Press Tackler. He is now the, the owner and president of morebusiness.com, and he will be discussing that as well. Before we get started, I just want to go over some brief housekeeping. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, feel free to submit them in the chat panel in the, the right-hand side of the, the Zoom webinar screen, and we will be answering all your questions at the end of the session. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to today's presenter. Take it away, Raj. Thank you, Sarah. It's good to be back. I really enjoyed doing webinars with Barracuda. Um, and so some of you may have uh, attended some of my prior webinars with Barracuda or some other organizations. I used to run a company called uh, Mailer Mailer. And so let me just kind of share a little bit about background about me and about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so you might be wondering who Raj is, why is he presenting the webinar? So uh, the, uh, the, the previous company I had was called Mailer Mailer. We made a tool called Prestacular for IT marketing. That was acquired last year year by J2 Global. Um, J2 Global, not necessarily a household brand, but they own lots of uh, uh, organizations or, or, or uh, brands that you may have heard of, like PC Magazine, uh, eFax, some of the others. So they bought uh, Mailer Mailer as, as an add-on to their email marketing tool. I've also sold a couple of other IT companies, and I'm now the publisher of marketing content library, morebusiness.com. So the webinars that I'm going to share with you, and the one today especially, are designed to, to show you how to generate millions of dollars in sales. Not like onesie twosie uh, small sales, but literally a lot of a lot of sales. And, and so they're also designed to help you scale your business to be a bit bigger. So stay tuned to the end. I'm gonna share a lot of tips with you. This is a very, I don't know, lack of a better word, meaty webinar. So uh, so let's go ahead and, 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 and get on with this here. So uh, another thing I wanted to share with you, and you may have already purchased this or downloaded it or something, there's a book called The IT Marketing Crash Course. It's actually a number one bestseller on Amazon on how to grow an IT company. I'm working on a new edition uh, that'll be coming out uh, in the near future, but uh, this is still a very good book if you want to get information on growing your business and, and uh, getting more clients. So does this sound like you? You want to get more IT security clients, you don't have time for marketing, you can close a deal, but you're not sure how to find qualified prospects. And perhaps hiring a marketing person or a professional is a bit too expensive. Well, here's what you're going to learn in this webinar how to package your consulting services to make it very easy for prospects to buy your services. And there's a timely opportunity right now uh, that we have, uh, which is, is it's called newsjacking. The marketing technique of newsjacking ties in a something that's going on in the news with a product or service that you provide, IT security, data back, things like that. So I'll show you how to use this major opportunity right now which is the release of Chrome version 68, which is coming out very soon. They're going to introduce it in July of 2018. Even if you don't provide any type of website, web design, any of those uh, web-related services, you can actually use this opportunity, and I'm going to show you how to find clients. We're actually going to go through and do a quick um, a demo of how you go find a prospect. So uh, the other thing I want to share with you is what to say to clients or prospects uh, when when you approach them and this includes people that are already your client base it includes people who are new to you uh, people that you don't know and introduce your services to them as i mentioned stay tuned to the end as a bonus for attending today's webinar you can get a free copy of a 2018 msp marketing plan template it's a 12-month step-by-step guide on what to do to grow your business if you follow the things in this template in 12 months from now you will most likely have a bigger business a lot of people use this guide uh, to grow their companies. You just edit the plan. All right, so the news checking opportunity that we're talking about right now. In July 2018, Chrome, which by the way is a very, very popular browser, it's got uh, the largest share of the market right now, uh, is going to mark sites that are not secure as not secure. Right now it doesn't do that overtly. If you go to most websites, just go to the top bar, the URL uh, location, and type in your company's email, uh, uh, website address. If it's secure, which means it's got secure socket layers enabled, you'll see a green lock, the word secure in green, and then HTTP 
S. That's what a secure website looks like to everybody, and, and that's what it looks like in Chrome. So what's happening? Right now, uh, the most recent version of Chrome is version 67, uh, and it, like I said, in about a month, they're going to release Chrome 68. So what will happen right now, if you type in a website address that is not secure, Google just shows an eye with a circle on it. If you click that eye, it'll tell you that the site is not secure. The difference is, in one month, it will no longer just be an eye with a circle around it. Google is going to say, not secure, right there at the top of every page that is not encrypted. Now, their blogs have actually indicated that this will be a red triangle uh, as a major warning, not just uh, black and white, which someone might overlook. So that's a pr pretty significant piece of information from their blog. And by the way, this screenshot is from their blog. Now, Google had done something similar once before. Back in January 2017, in Chrome version 56, what they did was they made all pages that collected credit card information or secure, uh, uh, passwords uh, to show a security warning. If you went to a website back then and you were about to buy a product and type in your credit card number and it was not secure, it would say not secure, like that screenshot that's on the left side. So what happened, and then, by the way, they gave them everybody four months notice to, to update their websites to be secure. So what happened was anybody who was selling a product or, or requiring a login had to scramble if they didn't have their site secured. They had to encrypt everything. Not really hard to do. I'm going to actually show you how to do it in a moment. But they scrambled because it was, it was really something that was causing them to lose business. So this is what Google has stated on their blog, and this is, again, a, a, an image taken from their blog. It says, the eventual treatment of all HTTP pages, note there's no S in the HTTP, in Chrome are going to say, not secure, and you can see their mock-up of their red triangle. Now, could you imagine somebody going to your website, if it's not secure, or maybe a client's website, and it shows this big not secure sign up there? People could think they got hacked. You might be thinking, well, you know, maybe I don't use Chrome, I use, I don't know, Safari, Edge, Internet Explorer, whatever you use, and maybe your clients do as well. That might be fine and good, but Chrome has over 60% market share, which means that people who are visiting your site, people who are visiting your client sites, are going to be using Chrome, for the most part, more than half of them. So this is just taken in April uh, 2018 in terms of market share. You can see over 60% of the people who use a web browser use Chrome. The next biggest use is Internet Explorer at just over 12%, and then Firefox and so on. So what Chrome 68 means is that there's going to be a big warning, like Google said, in a red triangle. It's going to freak people out, which means people may leave websites when they see that not secure warning. It could lower website traffic. It could cause a lot of concern from clients. So, for example, if your website's not secure, not encrypted, what could happen is a client might just be coming to look for your phone number, see a big security warning, and think for some reason that maybe you got hacked or something. And then they might be a little concerned about how well you uh, are protecting their uh, IT. Now, Imagine this on your client side too. If a client doesn't have security set up on their website, they could scare away their own clients. That could put a risk to your reputation. Now the interesting thing, as an IT firm, as a managed service provider, this is actually an opportunity. So what Chrome 68 means for you is if you take care of folks now, you can actually make a lot of money. The only solution to, to fix this is to encrypt a website before July 2018. So like I said, this is a major opportunity even if you don't provide website services. Now think of this. If one of your clients has an unencrypted website and some other IT firm, maybe one of your competitors, tells, me, tells them about it and then they plant the seed in their mind that says, hey, if your website's not secure, do you think you might have any other vulnerabilities that you don't know about? In other words, they're going to be using this newsjacking technique on potentially your clients. So what could happen? That, that means you could actually lose a client. So you don't want to wait on this. You want to alert your clients. Now, you don't have to hire a web person to encrypt this. I, I talked to lots of IT companies, and 
and anytime they want to do a web change, not not everybody, but just some of the, quite a few of them actually say, "Oh, I've got a web person that takes care of that stuff for me." This is something you don't need to pay a web person to do. It's very simple, especially if you use uh, something like uh, WordPress or Drupal or, or some other types of uh, managed uh, content management systems. WordPress is what many many people use. I'll just show you how to do this using uh, a service that we use. We use SiteGround to do our web hosting, and our site is in in um, uh, in WordPress. Uh, if anybody wanted to convert to SiteGround, I highly recommend SiteGround. You can use this link, morebusiness.com SiteGround, uh, to actually um, uh, look into their services. But every uh, web hosting company has uh, something called a, a control panel. Well, I shouldn't say every because there's always going to be someone who doesn't. But for the most part, they use something called cPanel, control panel. So what you do is log into your, your web hosting account, click on cPanel, and then in cPanel, there should be, under the security section, a tool called Let's Encrypt. Let's Encrypt provides you with an open source SSL certificate, secure server certificate. So watch how simple it is. You just click on Let's Encrypt, and this is the page, and you just turn these two buttons on, where it says HTTPS Enforce and External Links Rewrite. If they are off, simply turn them to the on position. Two clicks. That's all you have to do. The next page will just prompt you for a little note that says, hey, we've rewritten your external links. Just check your website. And you click OK, and you're done. This will take you all of two minutes, maybe. You log in, and you click two buttons. That's it. That's how fast you can, you can take care of this. And then your site will be encrypted. Or if you have, you have clients whose sites aren't encrypted, that's what they can do. You can tell them how to do it. Or what you can do is you can offer to do it for them. Uh, if it's your clients, maybe you offer to do it for free. Um, if it's for prospects, which I'll show you how to find in a moment, maybe you offer to do it for free, but then you offer a uh, security assessment, that kind of thing, or or you uh, or you charge a very very nominal fee. We call that a uh, it's a, it's a marketing concept of small purchases. I'm not going to go into detail about that marketing concept right now, but we're going to use it in this newsjacking technique. This is how a lot of people react when I show them how to encrypt your website. This is kind of how I react when someone says, hey, can uh, you help me with accounting work? I mean, I, I just, that's not my thing. So I just uh, react this way. Well, a lot of your clients are probably going to react that way too. And so that's why offering this opportunity, offering this service for them uh, would be a great thing. It's, it's not hard to do. You could try it out on your own website, uh, practice it on maybe a dummy website or something. So you've got it down and then, and then go ahead and do it for your clients. So to get prospects to sign up for uh, a security audit, which could then lead to more IT security work, here's a very simple marketing plan, three-step marketing plan. And I'm going to get a little bit more granular with this in just a moment, but this is the gist of the plan. You identify companies with unencrypted websites. I'll show you in a second exactly how to find them. Uh, point it out to them and address two topics with them. Are they using another IT firm? If they are, could they have other security vulnerabilities that they don't know about that that other IT firm may not have thought of? The reason this is effective right now is because you can prove to people that their websites are not secured. All you have to do is tell them to go look at their own web page in Chrome, and they will see the security warning. Then when you promote that offer to them, we call this the FUD factor, which stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. It's a very commonly used marketing technique. Offer to fix it. Offer to do a security audit for them. And this gets your foot in the door. This is how you can reach prospects who aren't yet your customers. Now, just using this technique as it is, just as I've described, is good. But there are ways that you can dramatically increase your odds of converting a prospect into a sale. So here are a couple things that you should do ahead of time to plan before you start reaching out to folks. First thing is write an article about what this means. Uh, if you don't want to write one, we've got some that you can use and inquire. I can I'll show you in a moment how to get those. But uh, post an article to reinforce your expertise. Talk about what the Chrome 68 implications are. And do one before the release, which is now, and then do one in July after it's released. Because there's going to be people who 
either don't believe you, don't listen to you about your warning, and they will see that their website is, is uh, not secure with that big fat warning on there starting July. And then they may start reaching out and really scrambling. So if you've got content ready to go, you can actually then tweet about it. You can post it to LinkedIn. You can post it to uh, Facebook, other social media platforms to drive more attention to it. You can even share it with, oh, maybe somebody at your local chamber of commerce or other associations that you belong to. It really helps uh, solidify that you are an expert in this area. Then to really get some prospects to, 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 to engage your services, create different emails for different audience segments. Now, you don't want to send a standard email blast to everybody. You would want one that is to your customers who do not have encrypted websites one email that says something different to customers that have encrypted websites because that's actually a referral opportunity. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and then also prospects who don't have their sites, contacts that you've met, maybe people that you've pitched over the last 12, 24 months that didn't sign with you, they signed with somebody else. Uh, and then also brand new prospects. So don't worry about all the content right now. We actually have a marketing bundle that you can get, uh, and I'll talk about that later on. But right now, I want to show you, I'm going to switch screens. I'm going to show you exactly how you find these prospects. This is a pretty cool technique. So let me stop my PowerPoint screen share, and I turn on my, um, my uh, Google Chrome browser. I'm going to use this in... Uh, incognito mode for Google. The reason I'm doing this is because that shows me the true rankings of sites. If you ever want to see what your website really ranks as, go into incognito mode because then it does not use all of your prior uh, search history, uh, viewing history, and so on in the results. So let's say my market is ooh, accounting firms. So I'm going to type in accounting firms. I live in Rockville, Maryland, which is the, uh, and work in Rockville, Maryland, which is the um, uh, uh, just about 20 minutes north of downtown Washington, D.C. So Google is going to go look up my IP address. It's going to then find firms that are close to me. So that's what it does. It finds a whole bunch of people in my general geographic location. This is taken from the Google location, business locations. So I'm not going to go into how to get listed there right now, but here's a company. Let's go take a look what I find. So the first listing is a Forbes article. I don't want that. Then Wikipedia, that's not that. So here's a company. The first real company that's listed as an accounting firm by Google is Cunningham Financial and Accounting Services. Look at what Google tells you. Right here, it tells me that this site is secure because it's showing me the URL and it says HTTPS. I know it's secured. The next one does not say HTTPS. This site is not secured. So this is a company, uh, Okay, probably about 10, 15 minutes from where I am, uh, that is not secured. So I'll click on it. And if you go to Google in incognito mode, they do show that the site is not secure. If you look at this at the, in the top menu bar, let me see if I can enlarge this so you can see the um, a, a bigger screen. So it says not secure at the top. Uh, if I scroll down to the bottom, I'm taking a look at their copyright notice. I mean, they came up on page one of Google the second listing, third listing, so copyright 2018. So they seem to care about keeping their website updated, but whoever's doing their security did not tell them about Chrome 68. This gives you a huge opportunity. What I want to do now is I want to find out who to contact at this company to send them a note saying, hey, your website's not secure. You might have other security um, issues looming. Would you like us to do a complimentary security audit? So here's how I find the right point of contact. When I look at this company, I see their name is Sarfino and Rhodes. That tells me that either some person named Sarfino or Rhodes are most likely going to be decision makers. So I'm going to just fish around their website. It's easy to find their phone number, but I don't know who to contact yet. So instead of calling and saying who's responsible for IT in your company, which they know right away, it's a telemarketer, they might not take your call. I'm going to look around. Uh, this site seems to make it fairly easy. I click on firm. Uh, here's something that says staff and then partners. Well, that was pretty easy. So I'll click on partners and I see pictures of people. So I'm looking for Sarfino or Rhodes. So I click down and the first person is Gregory Sarfino. So more than likely, this is one of the people that's going to make a decision. I just want to see who the other people are. So David Himes, Del, uh, Devlin, uh, Dow. So I just take a look at these people. And now I want to find the email address for Gregory Sarfino. Uh, they don't always list Gregory Sarfino's e email address or, you know, their contact page. 
may or may not have it. It doesn't look like it. They've just got their location and a general form to fill out. But I want to reach this person. So I'm going to open up another tab, and I'm going to type in Greg Sarfino email. You could type email or email address. So now Google is telling me that the first listing is their website. I didn't see it on there. Second listing website, third listing website. Fourth listing is USA Business DB. Watch this. If I click over here to USA Business DB, it tells me a lot about this company. I know their SIC code, their NAICS code. I know their ballpark revenues. I don't know how uh, recent this data is, but I mean, the fact that it's telling me that it's a $4 million company, whether that's now or last year or two years ago, that's still decent. That's good enough to know that this company can afford IT services. And then I look here and it says company contacts. And sure enough, there's uh, uh, lots of names that I recognize from the website here. And as I go down, look at this, emails, jackpot. I found their email address pretty quickly. It's first name at their domain.com. And then as I look at company contact information, I can see, okay, this person's an owner, most likely a decision maker. Here's their chief information officer, another person I may want to reach out to. So that's how quickly you can find who to contact. Their site's not secure. They're going to be hit for, with a real big surprise come July. Now, the reason an accounting company or a law firm or, or maybe even an HR firm are really good targets for you is that if they have any perception of being insecure about anything, that can cause an alarm. I mean, could you imagine one of their clients going to their website and in July seeing a big, fat, red, not secure sign up there? They're going to think this accounting firm is hacked. They're going to think, whether it is or not, that that's uh, irrelevant. The perception will be that. That could mean that people are thinking, geez, what happened to my tax return? Is that now all over the place? Am I going to get hit with IRS like fraud attempts? I mean, what, what's going to go on? They got my social security number. This accounting firm cannot uh, afford to have that type of issue. So when you reach out to them and in your opening email, tell them, hey, look, I looked at your website and I noticed that you're not secure. Um, you can test this yourself and then tell them how to do it and then offer to do a quick audit or offer to fix it. There's a pretty good chance that you're going to get a response back. This is such a different approach to marketing than what a lot of people do, which is they're basically spamming people. You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to just send out note after note saying, hey, who handles your IT services? People don't react to that. Here's something that can show them uh, that a piece of uh, the something about their IT is not secure, their website. It's not secure. So as I go through what Google's listings are, you know, I found, found this one was secure. I found this is the one I just looked at. This is not secure. Look at this. How many sites are not secure? I can contact this person, another one, another one down here. Okay, here's one that is secure. So I won't contact them. They're already, they've already got everything set. And you can just keep going deeper and deeper, maybe two, three pages deep, and find so many contacts very quickly. This isn't that hard to do. You saw how I did it. I actually found exact people, names, and, uh, and contacts of people to reach out to. Pretty, uh, pretty cool way of doing it. So, um, so that's how you find people. Now, what you do with them next, that's really what's going to help you convert these people into uh, these leads into um, qualified sales. So let me switch back to uh, my PowerPoint slide deck and we'll continue on with the presentation here. So let's go right over to this. All right. Sarah, are we good? Can you see my full screen? I can, yes. Okay, excellent. All right. So I showed you how to find prospects. Now, the window of opportunity. It is, this is not something that you can wait on. I mean, if you wait on it, what will probably happen is that other savvy business people, they're going to take your spot. You can't just wait around until you're ready to go. Google is going to release Chrome 68 in July. Companies who have not encrypted their websites are going to scramble. You want to be positioned to help. You want to alert people who haven't encrypted their site now, not later. We're about a month out now, actually. So for those prospects that you reach out to who don't take action, one, once they actually start seeing in July that they have a security warning on the website, that's when they're going to scramble. They'll probably remember you because you reached out to them first. You alerted them about this thing first. Another really clever technique you can use is when you reach out to people, if they don't respond right now, 
reach out to them in July because all you got to do in July is go to their website, see the thing that says not secure, take a screenshot and say, your website isn't secure. I mentioned this to you back then. Um, would you like to just follow up? I can help you get this fixed very quickly. And I think you may have other, you know, you, there, there's a possibility you may have other security issues uh, and we're happy to do a security assessment. The point I'm trying to make here is that when prospects think of IT security, you want them to think of you. So do things to help them think of you, position yourself. So getting back to this simple marketing plan, identify the companies with an unencrypted websites. And I showed you exactly how to do that. Point it out to them and then tell them those two things. Are they using another IT firm? If so, you may have other security issues if your IT firm hasn't told you about this one. That's the fear, uncertainty, and doubt part. And then offer to fix it. So do you remember many years ago, there was this big ransomware uh, uh, news item called CryptoLocker. One of our clients, uh, Scott Bechtel, he sent out an alert about CryptoLocker to about 100 people. And these were people that he just met over the years. Some people he pitched contracts to, they hadn't signed up with him. And some people he just met at networking events. Just about 100 people or so. And they were not his actual clients. So when he sent out a, a note about what CryptoLocker did, he got, I think like within one week, he got five uh, contracts to do some project business, total of about $5,000. Uh, and then out of those five contracts, he, got, he converted three of those people into, the, into uh, recurring revenue clients to the tune of 25K per year each, $75,000 per year that he got from one email blast that he sent out. Now, an average client stays with Scott about six years, so that's about $300,000 in brand new customer lifetime value just from that single alert. So I told you the techniques that I'm showing you here, uh, they're designed to scale your business, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, if you really start uh, pushing this properly. I mean, you could double the size of your business, you, theoretically, uh, if you just follow some of these techniques. Uh, you want to be prepared to be able to handle that too. But literally, if you start using that technique I showed you about how to find prospects today, just spend maybe 10, 15 minutes finding them, or if you've got an office assistant, a marketing person, um, or a local teenager, you, you saw how so, uh, simple it was to actually put together. You can just have them do it, give you a list, and then reach out to people. So the things that you want to share, like I mentioned, was an article. And this is the kind of content that we've included in our security marketing bundle, if you want to pick that up. If not, that's okay. You can write it yourself. Just and think of what your time's worth and then you can write it yourself. Uh, let me tell you exactly what's in there so you know what to write if you choose to write it on your own uh, or uh, if you choose to use ours, you'll, you'll know what's in there. One of the biggest challenges, if, if not the biggest one, that small IT companies face is the marketing and sales. So you want to close these sales pretty quickly. Uh, the longer you wait on doing this, the longer it's going to be before uh, you, you're going to bring in more leads and chances are other people may start to use this technique to uh, possibly against you. So uh, the first thing is post an article that includes a call to action about security issues. People are going to uh, understand why it doesn't matter if Chrome is the browser of choice because you know if they don't use Chrome, not a big deal. Over 60% of the market uses it, which means over 60% of their website visitors may see that security warning starting July. In the article, you mention information about their overall security. If they're using another IT firm that doesn't know about the security issue, what other security issues could be looming? So you wanna plant that seed when you share that with these people, with these prospects. And then of course at the end, but you want your article to close with a call to action that's designed to get the reader to contact you. Once Chrome releases uh, version 68, and like I said, we're currently on version 67, so this is now coming very quickly. Have an informative article about what it means if people see the security warning on their website. That's going to be pretty handy because when you start to reach out to folks uh, that, that maybe didn't respond to you now, maybe you reach out to them again in July when they can see that their site's not encrypted, you can just put a little note back to your blog on your website that says, hey, if you're seeing this warning, here's what you, you should do, here's how to fix it, and then direct people to your, your blog on the topic. And of course, that blog is going to encourage them to contact you to help them remove that security warning that people are then seeing. That blog should also recommend a full security audit, audit so that it positions you as an IT expert.
The other thing you should do, and this is what's really going to help with your outreach, is create email campaigns and a little bit of a different pitch in each one because you don't want the same messaging to everybody you ever met. They need different messaging because they have different needs. So the first one is to clients that you currently have who have not encrypted your website. It's a very nice, polite message. Just says, hey, just wanted to make sure uh, you knew that we we're, were helping you with your IT security through and through. Um, and, um, and we noticed that your website's not secure. We can help you get that remedied. Here's what's going to happen in about a month. Uh, give us a call. So you're going to have your current clients who are not encrypted reach out to you. Now, the next part is pretty neat. Um, the the uh, companies that you pitched in the last 12 months, 24 months, I don't know, six, uh, 36 months, send another note to them saying that, hey, we know you're not using our company for IT security, but we noticed that your website's not secure. You may have other security issues looming. You can read information about it on our blog. Please you know, reach out to me. Another email that you could send out is to the clients that you have whose sites are encrypted. Now, a lot of people think, okay, well, these people are already taken care of. They're my clients. You know, everybody's happy. They don't need to do anything. Let's stretch this a bit. What about their clients? So if your client is a retail store, a manufacturing company, um, an accounting company, and they have customers, they might want to let their own customers know about this security warning too. This is a wonderful referral opportunity. I know the number one way you probably get business is through referrals. But if you just kind of sit around waiting for a referral to show up, you tend to wait a long time. This is a way to make referrals happen. So what you do is there's a two-part message series here. One is you send a message to your clients, and your clients then can share that message with their customers. Something like, hey, we just want to alert you about this, uh, this message um, uh, that you're going to see in July. We can help connect you with our IT firm who helps us out. Let me know. And then you suddenly have built a referral machine through your own client base. Now, the last two messages that you want to send out, these are post-release, post-Chrome 68 release in July. One, to your current clients, if they ignore your initial warning about encrypting the website, if they still haven't done it yet, let them know, hey, I'm just following up. Wanted to let you know your site's not encrypted. Look at the screenshot or just go to your website. We can help you fix it. Uh, and then also to the prospects that you reached out to or you want to reach out to uh, then, because I'm telling you, if you use that uh, technique I just showed you when I, when I went through and found those uh, leads, you're going to see tons of them. You are going to see so many of these. And by the way, when I did that, I only did it for accounting firms. You could type in law firms. You could type in, I don't know, corporate law firms, immigration law firms, family law firms, uh, all kinds of different types of law firms just even. You know, then, and then human resources companies, uh, bookkeeping keeping firms. You could literally spend a couple hours just sourcing a hundred really qualified leads. And when you send these, these messages to them, uh, they're pretty qualified. So you'll start to get, you'll start to get some kind of response back. So here's a more granular marketing plan. So initially I had it in three steps. I'm going to expand this a little bit. And this is a, a complete step-by-step -step checklist of what you can do. You can copy this down, down or, or watch it on the webinar replay. Post the first blog to your website immediately. Then look up the prospects that you've pitched in the last 12 months or longer. You didn't win. Uh, you want to look at their websites to see if those are encrypted. Uh, then you also want to use that search method I showed you to find new prospects. And then visit the, web, visit the websites of your current clients to check to see if they're encrypted too. So this will give you a list of everybody's website that's, that's not encrypted. And then send the appropriate message to each contact. I'd recommend maybe following up by phone a day after you send the message, uh, and then again in July if they haven't taken any action because they will see it. This is not, there, there's no way they're going to think that you're, you know, like pie in the sky, just blowing smoke in the wind. They're going to see their website not secured. Now, you can write all the content yourself. Uh, that's perfectly fine if you have the time to do that. Um, we also have a bundle here. And as a webinar attendee for today, it's a, a, there's a 25% discount. Um, we've got all the content written. It's two blog posts before and after release. There's six email campaigns, all pre-written. Uh, everything's in Word format, so you can copy and paste. Use it right out of the box. Or you can make changes to them however you'd like to do it. So you can get that by going to morebusiness.com slash chrome68. Uh, the, the price on the screen will be $199, but you can just type in the, the coupon code chrome68 for that 25% off, making it $149. So like I said, th these techniques, especially newsjacking, it's really designed to help your business grow fast. 
I call it thriving, not just surviving. So you want to start generating sales conversations. Here's a way to look at whether investing in a kit like I showed you is worth it versus writing all of this yourself, uh, the, the marketing return on investment. So let's take a look at what your average client might be worth. I just pulled some numbers out here. You're, you obviously want to use this model with your own numbers. So let's say your average IT security client value is about $300 a month. So maybe you're charging for data backup services, maybe for um, uh, uh, other IT security services, and that your average contact length is two years. And by the way, regarding that $300, I, it, it might feel very low to a lot of you because I, I know I talk to, to many uh, MSPs and you know, their average client is a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars a month. So, so you could see how this scales very quickly. But even at $300 a month, uh, let's say the average renewal is one time, so you have a total of four years, which means your client lifetime value, $300 per month times 48 months is just over $14,000, almost $15,000. So your ROI would be $14,000 in customer lifetime value divided by the investment in this kit, which is 100 times uh, ROI. That is a pretty significant ROI. So it all depends on what you feel your time is worth. If you feel your time is free, which I don't recommend doing because you won't be able to scale your business thinking your time is free, but um, you could write it yourself or you could just get this kit and be done with it. Uh, we also have some additional material. I call it marketing made easy on morebusiness.com and it's content that you can buy a la carte. You can get subscriptions. It starts at $59 for other content pieces, ransomware, phishing, email attacks, um, uh, support tips, things like that. All available at morebusiness.com and just click on the buy content uh, uh, tab there. Um, as a bonus for attending today, I thank you for your time. Uh, this is how you can get that 12-month step-by-step MSP marketing plan. Uh, just go to morebusiness.com and type in MSP marketing plan with hyphens in between the, uh, the, the words and you can download it right away. So again, this is how you can get the full kit if you'd like. Uh, I am happy to take any questions uh, and uh, help you through this uh, this really cool opportunity, which is like I said, it's very it's a very timely opportunity. So, um, Sarah, do we have any questions? All right, I see a couple in the chat. Um, one of them says, what about if they're using other browsers that are not Chrome? So that is a good question. So the thing about Chrome is that Chrome has over 60% market share. So even if someone is using a different web browser or if their clients are using a different web browser, that still means 60% of the people visiting their website are using Chrome. The next biggest uh, uh, market share is Internet Explorer at just over 12%. So regardless of what web browser people are using, 60% of all web visitors starting July are going to see a warning if a website's not secured. So it's a pretty good bet. And, and by the way, that's stuff to include in an article if you like. Uh, if you um, if you want to use our, our content, it, it actually includes all that. It's already written. It's, I, I, I'm a, I, I do a lot of um, uh, good marketing writing, and and, uh, and so it's all there. It's uh, right out of the box. You can use it. So I hope that, uh, that answers that question there. Um, any other questions? I don't see any other in, in the chat box that I'm seeing, Sarah. Are you seeing any others? I do not see any additional questions. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, very good. Well, I, I thank you, everybody, for your time. I hope you found this webinar useful and uh, you find information that can help you grow your business. Uh, look to figure out how you can scale it to millions instead of just a little bit at a time. Uh, when you think big, big things happen. Great. Thank you, Raj. And thank you for everyone for joining today. Have a great day. All right. Thanks.